This is your Tech News Briefing for Thursday, January 19th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Nearly a decade ago, 3D printers were being touted as the future home appliance that would revolutionize the world. We'd all be printing the things we needed, Star Trek replicator style. It led to a boom in investment in 3D printing companies and a lot of flashy stories. But that hype has mostly faded. How much demand is there for printing your own chocolate bar? But in place of the hype, a funny thing is happening. That technology is beginning to quietly revolutionize some industries and could have implications for the shape of global supply chains. Joining me to discuss how and why this is happening is our tech columnist, Christopher Mims. Hi, Christopher. Thanks for coming back on the show. Hey, Zoe. Always a pleasure to be here. So for those of us who may have forgotten, can you give us a quick refresher on how 3D printing works? 3D printing builds up an object one layer at a time. So it's almost like growing an object, whereas traditional manufacturing, you cast it or you extrude it or you put it into a mold or something like that. Can you give us some examples and why are these different from the ones we saw maybe five or six years ago? What's happening now is that 3D printing is starting to become a mass manufacturing process, whereas in the past, it either could not make parts that were strong enough to be used in devices that people would actually use in their homes or in a factory, or it was just too expensive. So part of this is that there are new, stronger plastics that are being used for 3D printing, but also there's all these new types of metal 3D printing, and the results are, for example, 3D printed stainless steel parts that meet the exact same specification as a cast stainless steel part. And so as a result, they can go into machines. And one example that I found in my research was a company called Curio in Iceland, and they make fish processing machines, which is kind of a big deal because normally when you pull fish out of the ocean in one place, you got to ship it halfway across the world to where the labor is cheaper, typically in Asia, to, you know, gut and fillet and skin the fish. But if you have one of these machines, which is made with parts, which are 3D printed in this little facility in Iceland, you can keep that labor local. So he was an early adapter because in the old days, and this is true of many manufacturers in the West, if you wanted a metal part made, you know, you had to drop all the specifications, send those to somewhere in Asia, somebody would make it for you, they would send it back, you would test it, maybe it's not perfect, you wait a couple more weeks for that cycle to repeat, and it's just not very cost effective or efficient. But if you can 3D print a part, test it, doesn't work, immediately tweak it, and that part that you've created is the one that you're going to use in your machine because maybe you're only producing a few hundred of these machines per year as opposed to tens of thousands, then it totally makes sense in that context. Are these companies mostly smaller manufacturing outfits or are they bigger companies as well? Some big companies are getting into this. So GE has started 3D printing parts for itself. BMW is using 3D printing throughout their supply chain. HP has started making industrial 3D printers for others. So just the printers, not to mention the software and the materials, are a multi-billion dollar market all over the world already. But it's still nascent, right? Like you can't compare it to the number of metal objects that are cast every year using conventional means. But it is growing very quickly. And some of the analysts I talked to said, you know, because of supply chain pressures and people wanting to reshore manufacturing, this could grow very quickly in the next five to 10 years, much more quickly than it has in the past five to 10 years. I know you said we're just at the early days, but are there drawbacks that even now some companies are having to deal with when it comes to 3D printing? The biggest drawback is cost. So if you want to go above, you know, a few tens of thousands of units, it just makes more sense to manufacture the old way. It'll be faster kind of per item that you're creating and it will cost you less money. I mean, these days, industrial 3D printers, they're large, but it can still take, you know, 18 hours to print, you know, a large metal part. And 
the only reason that it, it's cost effective at all is sometimes you can print many parts at the same time inside a single volume that's being printed, or you have many 3D printers running in parallel. So the technology really does need to scale up. Like it needs to become 10 times faster, <laughs> 10 times cheaper, et cetera, if it's gonna eat more of the manufacturing market. Are there certain products that 3D printing is just better at making than others? I mean, we heard early on that 3D printing was going to make us chocolate bars and cars and clothing. That Just the list went on and on. So are there certain things now that they're realizing actually 3D printing is good for this and not so good for that? We are definitely not about to get the Star Trek replicator. You know, I remember decades ago I wrote about 3D printed pizza that they were going to launch on the space station or something. That kind of stuff doesn't make sense. There's certain materials you also just can't really 3D print. You can't 3D print a window, let's say. You can't 3D print the body panel of a car because there are just other ways to do that that are so much better. So it is going to find limited application. It's definitely not going to be everywhere. It does make a big difference, though, for certain types of plastics, metals, things that we rely on for our everyday life. I mean, we've seen technology upend all sorts of industries, and we've been promised that 3D printing was going to be that, and yet it still, to many extents, hasn't been. So is this the moment that that changes? Is 3D printing kind of coming of age right now? I think for some parts, for some applications, 3D printing is finally finding practical, widespread application. You know, there was a ton of hype early on, it's starting to live up to some of that promise. But, you know, as with all technologies, it takes longer and it's not quite as revolutionary as we're initially promised. So for small manufacturers, this works. But should people who work in manufacturing be worried about their jobs being taken over by 3D printing? In the U.S., at least, the challenge we really have is that there just aren't enough people in manufacturing. There are not enough people learning kind of the older way, you know, machining and casting and other ways of doing things. But one company I talked to that makes parts for the automotive industry said this has actually helped them with hiring because young people who are used to you know, doing everything on a computer, they come in and they go straight from a 3D CAD model to, you know, on the factory floor right next to them, this thing gets printed out. They don't even have to get their hands dirty. It's more intuitive and it feels like the future to young people who otherwise might not be excited about going into manufacturing. So the future may be soon upon us. That's our tech columnist, Christopher Mims. Thanks for joining us, Christopher. Thanks for having me, Zoe. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. For more tech stories, head over to our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.